whatever I got in this little book. So uh, this morning, as I told you, I, I was writing some little notes. I got up and felt something felt uh, put some notes down. I very rarely do this with the intention of uh, using kind of things like this in satsang, but for some reason it felt strong enough to do that. And uh, you mind if I share them with you now? Good, good. Okay, let's see what's happened now. So I didn't write in any order. I was just uh, scribbling down very quickly. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm looking over it now for the first time. What did I write here? One thing. Satsang restores the mind to its true nature and harmony. In Satsang, this is what is happening. The mind uh, is coming back uh, to its original nature, you see, which is one harmony uh, as the self. It, this is happening. First thing. Second, the old ego mind identity will come from time to time. Uh, but don't worry, in the end, it is merging inside the heart. So again, uh, the old mind patterns, tendencies, just as I was speaking with Emma just now, they will keep coming. When they come, don't feel frustrated. Oh, why is it coming again? And so on. Because then you are cooperating with the mind's game. It's as though it's caught you, and you are responding uh, uh, from personhood. It's caught you because each time we respond or take it personally, it's as though the mind wins in this little game. But each time it comes, increasingly, before you get pulled into its, uh, its net, uh, you 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 just stay aware it is arising now you can feel something wants to go into identity with it but that's also observed that's also observed and keep your attention just in the space of uh, quiet and solitude from where your your looking begins your looking comes out of this silence and it is silent you see so if you don't identify and, and become personal, then nothing happens. It will not stain you. It will not leave its footprint inside the consciousness. It just come and go. Everything is coming and going. And in fact, every day, as you are moving about in life, so many things are just happening in front of you, but they don't trouble you. Why they don't trouble you? Because you have no interest in them. And if you don't have any interest, or if something has no meaning for you, there is no need for you to transcend it. It just doesn't register. Look at the things that are registering as though they are important, and look at them and say, for, for whom? What is it? Uh, for whom is this? does this matter so much? You know? And see if you can find the one who, who is involved and invested in it. And as you're looking in this penetrative way, you find that uh, it's just a thought. It is always just a thought. At the root of it is a thought that has been given power, it's been energized by belief and habit. And if you keep on looking and seeing that it, that's all there is to it, and you are witnessing, you, the witness, uh, can the witness itself be witnessed? You can witness the mind, you can witness thought and the sense of ego, but that which is uh, observing, witnessing all of this, uh, can that itself be seen? Does it have any shape? Does it have any size or name even? You see, Like this you, you look and you will find that uh, the mind energy is cut immediately. As soon as you remember uh, your, your true place, the energy of the mind loses it loses its force, and again, uh, nothing happened effectively. Uh, Papa G, my master also, he there was a book that was written about him, and the book was called "Nothing Ever Happens." What kind of title is that for a book? Nothing ever happened. Most people are reading books about what is happening, what is the book containing, what kind of happening. But he's saying, whole book, nothing really happened. Nothing happened if only if the mind says something happens, and it is believed, 
then it is recorded this thing happened. Otherwise, nothing is happening at all. You see, you can have two people standing side by side. One is John, one is James. I say, John, what is happening? And John says, Oh, Muji, oh, there's too many things to ask me this question. Too many things are happening. Too many things are happening. I don't know where to start. Okay, I come back to you. James, what is happening? Nothing. Nothing. They are both standing in the same place. One is saying, Too many things are happening. Too many things are happening. Okay, I come back to you. What about you, James? What is happening? Nothing, Baba. Nothing is happening. And both feel that they are speaking the truth. What is the difference? One is giving attention to all kinds of silly things and irrelevant things out of habit. And because of habit, and for a long time doing it, they accept it to be real. They have accepted it, and so it causes so much trouble and destruction in their life. The other one, everything is going on. Also, da, 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 da. what happened? Oh, nothing, Baba. Nothing. Which one you want to go and spend time with, having lunch? Uh, the one where so many things are happening, or no, no, nothing? Nothing is happening. So you be like this. In fact, don't just say nothing is happening, but see and see actually. Uh, my mind wants to say something is happening, but actually, I don't want to waste your time with foolish. Nothing is happening. Uh, I am here. I am silent and, and still. I find myself like that. Why should I talk about something is happening? Is nothing is happening. I soon forget. If I say this thing is happening, next moment I forget what I said. So it's irrelevant. So don't worry about these things. Simple put. What's my next point? Do not uh, reject or regret your life. Do not reject. Uh, life is happening around like that. Don't make it too. Oh, my life is so bad, and this, uh, you know, I, no. Uh, see all things with an even mind. Uh, where is life out there? No. Whatever is happening out here is registered here. Uh, uh, the life and the world that you see is really what's happening in your mind. You see, and in fact, nothing is happening in your mind of significance until you say, "Oh, this thing is happening," and then it seems like that happens. Otherwise, if I meet someone, I say, oh, "You know, you okay?" I say, "Yeah, just, uh, just I have so much. My head is hurting with so many things going on." Oh, okay, okay. And then next time I see you, what's happening? You okay? And nothing is happening. It's all just uh, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. It's nothing at all. We are just uh, uh, somehow habituated to talk about nothing at all. Hmm? But something inside is going, oh, no, no. You're saying it's nothing, but it's something for me. And then suddenly, there comes a me who something is happening for. You see, you need to watch that. And just when I say, pay attention to the mechanism of the psychological uh, play of the mind, and you'll see it's nothing at all. If something else, take it to be something. The belief that it is something, make it feel like it is something. Simple. Next thing. Don't worry about anything. Leave all the worries about the world, what's going to happen. Or the, let God take care of it. You pay attention to uh, your own inner being. Nobody is doing it. Everybody is paying attention through the senses, and, uh, and the projections, and uh, the voice in their head, and uh, the voice from someone else's head. Uh, this is, uh, creates so much noise. Don't don't worry. Uh, no matter how much a human being is uh, doing good things, bad things, they 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 don't stay. Everything is washed away, washed away, washed away. Um, of course, while we have the sense of personhood, it seems to come very near and feel very much afraid of what might happen. But the advice you are receiving now. The advice you are receiving now, and putting it into 
to, to take a real good look and follow, you'll see that it takes out the noise and the fear and the anger and the frustration and identity out. You don't need them. Without them, you are in a, your godly nature, your true nature. Next point I wrote, remember, life is not against you. Very important point. Mind sometimes create these things, oh, you know, nothing is working for me, and so on. This is all creation in the mind. Life is not against you. You see? It's only against, maybe you may feel against the idea you have of who you are. Your self image will come to a lot of struggles. But remember, the life, you are life. And at the same time, the witnessing or observing of life is arising in you. But in that place, if you pay attention, there is a great field of serenity and peace there. And each time you keep acknowledging that, recognizing this, it's becoming uh, much more clear. And uh, the troublesome attention and mind is drifting away. That's one thing. Next thing I wrote here that see challenges as opportunities to awaken from the ego's grip. While we have a, a too much strong idea of yourself personally, so many troubles are coming. You think, okay, if I solve these, more troubles are coming like that for the ego mind. And you know it is good because at a certain point you get fed up of your ego. You see? And all these things help you to turn your attention, if you are smart, to find out there must be something beyond this thing. Uh, something is already working in your favour that brought you to satsang, to set you free from the molestations of the psychological uh, mindset. You see. So, uh, whatever challenges, when you are in the state of personal identity, the challenges will feel like bad luck. People say, Oh, some spell is on me. And because you see, you cannot help looking at things in that way. That's the nature of the ego mind. But as you are coming out of this, the challenges, the seeming difficulties, something, the wisdom in you is seeing them in a new way. It's like uh, um, uh, grace comes in many different forms, and you are seeing them. In the old mindset, you may have thought, "Oh no, nothing is going right in my life," because that's the habit is to complain and to, you know, identify, and uh, all these things are such a waste of time and energy. You see, now I say, use the challenges that come, and you will. In fact, the more not to look out for challenges, just staying put, recognizing, uh, marinating in your seeing. Being in your silence like this, remembering that, seeing that everything, thoughts, feelings, sensations, everything comes and goes, just like clouds passing. If you don't log into them, you will not remember them, you will not record them. They're just things passing, you see. And even if your body mind, even if your mind has to participate in some activity, which it will do, whether you are awake or not, the body is here to act as well. But you don't necessarily have to identify uh, personally with the things, and you see that things, life goes much better, because the irritant, the nuisance factor, which is the ego interfering, projecting, and so on, has been uh, transcended like that. Uh, I wrote again. Uh, Trust the supreme power. Trust God, who takes care of the world. He has a supreme power and control of all things. You may not be able to understand. Don't try and understand the world right now, because it's also a mental uh, tendency to try and work out what's going on. And in everybody, so many people get wrapped up in so much conspiracy theories, and this is happening and that is happening, and we all end up just feeling confused. You need not be confused. Pay attention uh, to your own being. You see, 
just the natural sense of being. And keep your attention here. The natural feeling of existence in you. It's not personal. It's just a sense of being. And just be one with that. And don't let don't let it connect up with concepts and start to create some little uh, show. No, just just by focusing your attention like this, look what's going to happen. Look what happens each time. You start to again. It's like it reintroduces you to the deeper, the deeper reality of yourself. Such a simple advice may seem oversimplistic, but it works. You see. Just a sense of being. Don't be thinking. Thinking is not going to help you. You cannot think your way into silence. You cannot think your way into freedom. Just keep quiet. Leave these things. Let them come. You did not create them. Let them come. But don't let them take you with them. Just remain quiet inside yourself, resting your attention in the oneness with your own being. That is it. Simple. You see, sometimes some thoughts may come and knock on your door. Can I come in? They just don't even answer. Just stay as you are. He has to go. Don't get into any conversations with your mind. He wants that. Uh, let him go. There's nothing. It's no big deal. You let him come and go. Nothing, no. Mm. Sometimes people um, feel that uh, yesterday I was. Uh, Speaking with uh, someone, and uh, he was speaking that uh, I am nothing, I am, I am nobody, and so on. No? Now, in our world, because of the way that we are cultured to believe, because everybody wants to be somebody, nobody wants to be nobody. You see, here was someone who say, "I, uh, I don't know anything, Baba. I don't know anything. I am nobody," and <sighs> such space. Such space was there, you see. Now, sometimes our worldly attitude and mindset things. Who wants to know a nobody? Nobody is interested in. No one is interested in a nobody. I don't want to be in, meet such a person. This is the mind. But when you discover actually more and more, you don't have to be a somebody. Don't tell anybody that because they will trouble you. Just be that. Sometimes I get a letter. I remember one letter saying to me, uh, Babaji, thank you for allowing me to be nobody. What a beautiful letter this is, you see. But you will not get many letters like that. You see, no one has found a secret. It's not just what you say or write, but what you have come to recognize. Uh, something is so empty. I cannot say anything about it, you see. It doesn't stop you from working, it doesn't stop you from doing what you have to do, but inside such a beautiful field of serenity is there. Discover this. Don't have to speak about it. Don't try to demonstrate it. Go your quiet way. That is a true that is a true one, you see. So never think that someone who you may hear this one is nobody. So don't think this one is a loser. No, he's neither loser nor winner, unless you want to say he's win. He's won himself back. This one has uh, won themselves back. You see, this thing. Yeah, beautiful. Should I continue or should I read another letter? You want me to finish off my notes with you? Give me some sign. Very good. Okay, okay, then I read. Next point I wrote here this morning, you know. Beware and avoid, beware of pride and arrogance. And even in spirituality, sometimes something wants to come, yes, I have done it, you know, I have uh, you know, I am uh, I meditate, I can meditate for three, four hours. These things you should not speak about. Better you are quiet. And uh, let let your presence speak. Uh, too much mouth is not good. So beware of feeling special, or you know I am chosen in some special way. Yes, uh, you may feel, of course, this life is for freedom, and I will remind you of that. 
there's the great opportunity of having a human form that in this form you can uh, wake up to the truth uh, the imperishable self the unborn and uncreated reality that is the source that you are this thing is you're in the right place today is what saturday saturday well okay uh, uh, many saturdays uh, we have so many things on on television so many things happening around the world but you are in satsang and that is the best place uh, you are here and you are uh, marinating in the truth of your own self this is the greatest the greatest use of time because everything else is disappearing everything else come to an end you see but this that you are discovering will never end everything else that comes from the world it is okay the, the, the changefulness of the world it is okay uh, god the paramatman made it like that that things in the realm of the changeful it will always be changing something you see and don't spend so much time pursuing the changeful if you stay in your heart god life will bring whatever changeful things that will uh, supply you with your needs and and give you joy in the world you don't have to go pursue that uh, pursue your own self not your personal self pursue uh, the lord within your heart this is a Tremendous already. Um, I wrote here, but I think I touched on it. The next one: Do not let the mind be disturbed by the news uh, in the world. Trust in God. You see, because this is now uh, things that trouble many, many people. The virus of the mind is greater than any other uh, physical virus. Worrying, 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 then you are never going to be happy. You don't allow the natural peace of yourself to kind of shine through. But you are doing this now. You are discovering and recognizing and honoring the peace inside you. And so have an attitude of gratitude uh, that, wow, how, many, how much lifetimes I have wasted, how much time I have wasted. But now, now it's different. Now I am home. Okay. When, when the face of the mind is washed away, the face of God shines in you. Sometimes you look in the face of a human being, and it's the it's a book of sorrow, of too much. Worry, uh, too much psychological uh, self-concern, and please remember, um, uh, the 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 body, uh, the ego, uh, cannot work without body obsession. Uh, it wants to bring you always. You are worried about your body, so therefore I say the I am the body belief uh, uh, keeps ego very busy, keeps him very active. So gradually, you see, as you are discovering the greater truth that you are consciousness, as you are discovering this, you see, the obsession, the 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 grip of ego uh, is loosening from you naturally. You don't have to push him away. Just by discovering and honoring yourself, the ego mind, the obsession, the fears, all of that is going. You see, it's going. You don't have to push him. He's going. Bye bye. You don't have to say bye bye. Ta ta. No, no. He's going by himself. You see? So, as you are doing this, the face of the mind of time and trouble and all this is washed away. It's like the mind, the face of the mind is becomes a curtain that pulls open and there shines the presence of God. You see? That happened. Next point. Have you had enough? Well, I can stop for a bit. But anyway, if we have it here, and then it is recorded, and you can make your notes later or something and look at them. It's all good news. Everything good news for you today. Look. Mm-hmm. 
Learn to be more by yourself. Learn to be by yourself. Enjoy the presence that you are. You see, because a mind doesn't want, you know, when the 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 what I would call it the psychological mode of the mind, uh, you know, doesn't allow you or encourage you to be by yourself. You see, here I'm talking about you in that way, but gradually. As you are discovering discovering the deeper truth of yourself, you see, you become naturally attracted to it, naturally attracted to it, and then also, it's almost too late for the mind; it can't catch you, because you are again in the in the infinite sky of your own self, beautiful, the bird of freedom has flown. You see, here, learn to be by yourself, and even use these current times now. Uh, watch, you know, uh, those who are searching for the truth, those who are discovering the truth, not just searching, searching and discovering the truth. You see, they also value this time somehow. It gives them a chance to look more deeply into uh, the truth of their nature and to confirm that. Mm. And in times of seeming trouble, keep the mind inside your heart. Same thing as I said before. Let mind be inside your heart. When the mind is inside the heart, after he gets to love it so much, he won't come back out as mind anymore. This is not by force. Your attraction to the self is itself bringing your mind into your heart. We don't have much to go now. I'll just let me see if there's anything more on this page. Oh my God, it goes on. Okay. Next thing, important one, do not be too quick to believe everything people tell you. Remember, they are not necessarily saying what is truly so, but more that they are saying what is inside their mind. Sometimes we are quick because somebody tells you this is happening, so and so is happening. It is not necessarily so. What they are showing you is simply how their mind works. As you stay quiet inside your heart, you will not listen so deeply and intently to people. Uh, your attention is one with your heart vibration. So even when things are not important, automatically you don't even hear them. This is the power of the self. You see? Beware of gossips, people. No, no, no. And gradually, as you become clear, no, no, uh, my heart does not need any of that. Don't uh, get into that. You see how wonderful it is. See how wonderful it is. Uh, keep uh, uh, be open, but keep your attention and mind neutral. So it sounds like lots of things I'm pointing out, but it's all for the same reason. Everything is only to stay as you are. But these things, just point as I wrote them down, be open, keep the mind and attention neutral. Remain shapeless. This is wise. Uh, um, stay wise and free, uh, uh, not, not shallow-minded in that way, not trivial-minded. So keep your attention. It happens anyway, naturally. All these things I'm telling you now, you don't have to go, okay, step one, step no. It can all be contained in simple advice. Simple advice. Uh, watch the sense and the feeling, the belief, I am my body mind. You see. And gradually you see that because you can see the body mind functioning, you cannot be that. You see? You are that which is viewing them. That's the first great discovery. You are the witnessing of them. So once you see that, stay one with the weakness, and these energies they will lose their influence over you. This is very good advice now. Uh, you are already in the flow of freedom. You are already in this flow of freedom, in the vibration of freedom. In the field of grace, it is already so. 
Uh, I have to remind you of that because sometimes, you know, uh, doubts come and, oh, no, I'm never going to get this and so on. Now you're going to see, oh, this is all mine. This is nonsense. Don't say, I am bound. Don't even say, I am free. Say nothing. Keep quiet. Good advice. So again, I wrote here, don't accept the feeling, I have done it. Uh, just stay as that impersonal awareness, which is not demonstrating anything. It is here. It is taking care of everything automatically. You will see and experience this. You don't have to believe. You will see and verify, but it is so. Like that. Without the belief, I am my body and my mind, ego has no hold on you and will gradually cease functioning. Again, without the belief, I am the body-mind. You don't think you believe it. It's so ingrained, you take it for granted. It is, it for so long, it was operating as the fact of you. Now you realize it's the fiction of me. It is not. And the fact is never changed. A fact cannot change. But the mind is always changed. It's like a river flowing by. It is always changing. And notice this, you see. In your search for truth and liberation, strong mind attacks only mean that you are on the right path. And the mind is fighting for its existence. You see? Don't be thinking, oh, this means I'm failing. No, don't do its work for it. You stay as you are. These things have come, and you are going to use them in a way to just refine your seeing. Don't panic. It's the mind and the old uh, idea, identity, and person. This is where the panic happens, you see. Uh, do not be discouraged. All will turn out good in the end. Don't worry. That's beautiful. And uh, for the moment, again, same thing. When the road seems to get rocky and hard, it is because you are on the highest path. God is with you until your separation ends. Then only He is. Again, when the road seems to get rocky and hard, it is only because you are on the highest path. Let's say, call it path. Hmm? For some of you, I will not use this word path anymore. Because you will see, as you discover the truth, there is no path. You are here. All paths are going somewhere. But while we still retain the, the sense of personhood, you will feel, I am journeying, I am travelling, I am getting closer. So to those, I say, when the road gets rough, it is because you are on the highest path. Uh, truth, God, is with you always, until your idea of being separate ends. And then only God alone is. Truth alone is. And you are that. You are that. And so, I put it down. As you discover, uh, and you are discovering, and gradually, no doubt is remaining in you. There is neither doubt, even belief, you have transcended, because you have come home to the fact of what is. Then all these instructions, they will also merge inside. They will vanish. Everything will go. And this silence will shine from you, this peace. It is already doing it. In many cases, I know. I see. From the Sangha heart, this peace, this silence, this joy. You see? This joy that is not coming because of any event. 
is just the natural joy, the bliss of being. If you don't touch thought, you will be confirming what I am saying. You are already without words. You are in the confirmation of what I am pointing. How rare, and yet how universal, how profound that is. Take one moment. The Self is not an experience you are going to have. It makes experiencing experienceable. It is not a feeling or a mood. It is your gapless, gapless reality, distanceless, ever present. Yet, until we are aware of the fact of it, we continue to journey, experience after experience, becoming more and more refined, until the separation dissolves. Very good. I am going to look at whatever else is here for now. I am going to take a moment, because I do not feel to plunge into a letter for the moment. Heart is full and empty at the same time. But it has no shopping in it. And this is your natural, your nature and your natural state. You see, so simple, so natural. You see, but you touch. I. Mind, ego. And mushrooms into pure trouble. And we feel, but how can I live without my mind? Uh, it's not like that living without mind. But when you discover yourself, mind becomes purified and functions in service to the self. When we hold on to uh, personal identity, uh, mind plays personal. Everything becomes personal. Life becomes personal. We are experiencing our existence too personally. Confusion. It's like you cannot get on top of it when you recognize your place here. Then you see what's the big deal. What was all the pro- what was all the problem? Some of you know this very much. Others discovering this more and more. And why not? After all, you are already the Self, just at the same time experiencing the dream of personhood for a while. And nobody escapes it in the beginning. But gradually, this use this life to wake up. Because, and uh, it shows you the best way to be in this existence. Do what comes to you to do, and uh, you will bring light, harmony, joy, peace to all the things that you are engaged in in the world. You will not become enslaved by them. Only ego will be like master and slave, but you, there are no names for you. 